Hey guys, today is March 27th and it's been a while. I've been uh, kind of just busy. Uh, I've been kind of um, just taking time for myself, trying to e evaluate and, and process things that's happened over the last couple years. Uh, I, I know I've talked about this before, but... Um, that stench that I was with my stepdad for those eight months plus, uh, it really, really has had taken a toll on me to where it's like taking me almost two years now. He'll be gone two years. Yeah, two years, May, next month. And uh, I'm just now wrapping my brain around trying to get my body and mind and you know, in sync again. So I've talked a lot about my theories and my analogies of what's gone on with my body and stuff, but I want to kind of talk about what I've been experiencing now. It might be different from what I've said before. I didn't go back on my, my um, videos to see what I've talked about. I just like to do these in the moment, uh, things fresh on my mind. Uh, thoughts and feelings, you know. Um, sorry, I'm wiping the dust off my laptop as I talk. But, uh, yeah, you know, for me, my whole life, I always compared myself to the guys. Even though I had a female body, I just always did. I guess I couldn't get the grip that I was in a male. And puberty, when pu puberty hit, it was hard, but my puberty didn't come until I was 14 years of age. And I thank God for that. Uh, and then you get pressured, you know, about that time where you got to start thinking about the opposite sex, settling down, getting married, da, da, da. As far as in my family, my grandma pushed that really hard, uh, felt we should be married by 18 and having kids. So. Uh, I, I am the second oldest out of my dad's side of the family, and so my uh, cousin, who's the oldest, is also female, and she got that pressure really hard because she's the first. But anyway, uh, so I never, I always compared myself, and I always admired guys. I was always curious about, honestly, about their penises and everything because I lacked all that. And I used to think all the time that, you know, it's not fair because I had this body. And, you know, even though we dealt with it every day and we survived it and we worked through it, uh, it doesn't mean we didn't have times where we felt like it wasn't fair in life. And I did have times like that. There was times that I would just burst out and cry. And there wouldn't be any reason that triggered that except for that I just needed a good cry. And as I process my life and look back, uh, it was probably all had to do with gender identity. Uh, nothing, there was nothing you could talk about or there was nothing out there to talk about to understand this stuff. So getting through that medical process that I was a caregiver for my stepdad and all the turmoil it caused, all the drama it caused, all the me having to be up here all the time elevated so I could handle all this and handle my mom who wasn't always help she was a hindrance at times because she felt like if she gave him any attention he would just waller in it and want more and she was right but but she was also uh she also put me kind of in the middle between them so anyway so now we're going on two years next month that he's been gone and uh, the last six or seven months, I've talked on the videos where I've understood the uh, the um, comfort eating, the ice cream, the sugar. And uh, so now the last few months, I've been really uh, going through something about body image. And I know I kind of touched bases with the feelings like, you know, we I guys my age who are transitioning now have not gotten a chance to really have our bodies develop and stuff like young men 
And so some of us who have uh, weight issues because of trauma in our lives or for whatever reason, I think anybody who has a weight issue who carries extra weight has a trauma issue. Now, the trauma may not be a physical trauma. It could be an emotional trauma. It could be something they're holding back, something they buried very deep, they don't know, uh, don't realize, whatever it could be. Anytime I see somebody with weight, I now look at them as they're carrying weight for some purpose and they can't break loose from it. And a lot of people don't self-help. I do a lot of self-helping only because I had the time. I looked back on my last five years of working and I knew I'd put on weight because uh, that was a high stress job. It was a negative environment. Uh, I loved my job, but it was a negative environment. And everybody I went to the academy with, we all gained 20, 25 pounds, you know, after within time. And it's all stress, cortisol levels. Uh, you are elevated up here on alert at all times. So uh, I looked back at those photos and I thought, my gosh, it wasn't just my injury. I mean, I got heavier with my injury because of all the steroids and stuff they pushed through me in two years. But... Uh, yeah, you know, it's not just the not it wasn't probably just the the job, but as I got older, the more and more I had to deal with my gender identity and I pushed it aside and survived for a long time. But then when I got hurt and they finally retired me, I. Uh, yeah. The gender identity, and I didn't know it was gender identity, but whatever I was feeling, I just, it was hard to deal with more and more, and the weight just came on and came on. When I started to juice and change my my eating habits to no processed foods, all natural, raw, I mean, I didn't go raw or vegan or anything, but I did eat as close to raw or natural as I could with cooking it. But uh, bought organic, if you know, whatever we could do, we did. And I was juicing, and uh, I can't get myself back into the juicing. You know, uh, we buy a mega green powder that we put in our smoothies, and we'll ask, actually add some uh, spinach or something in our smoothies in the morning. And I know we've gotten our greens that way. But I reflect back when I was juicing and I was really focusing on my phalloplasty and really being healthy and trying to bring my body into unison with the mind, body, and soul. And uh, I did. And I brought that. And I lost 30 pounds. And, and the fat was melting away. I wasn't losing muscle, but the fat was uh, melting away. In fact, some of the so much fat melted off my butt, which I was given a butt in life. Uh, that my battery pack for my spinal cord stimulator stuck out really bad. But I was told by them they need that I need that extra fat between them because it'll cause it to uh, to um, not short out, but it causes problems for it or something. It can't get good signals or whatever. So <laughs> I kind of freaked out that way. I'm like, dang, I felt good and losing weight, and now you're telling me i got to put fat back on in that? But don't worry, there's fat there now. Here's the thing. I have been, I'm not putting on weight as far as the scale is concerned, but my body is shifting again. And where I was losing those pair hips that I call recliner hips, uh, I've, they've been coming back on me really bad. And I'm like, what is going on with my body? What is happening that it feels it needs to collect fat again and store fat? And I talked to my wife about it because I've been getting discouraged about it. And she said, it's not you. You're doing, I cut out sugar. I cut out processed sugar again. I haven't had it for a long time. I also have cut out a half and half in sugar or coconut palm sugar in my coffee. Um, I've always drank it black, but I got it hooked on the sugar sweet thing when I was on that sugar sweet thing kick, and it was hard for me to knock that off, but I finally did. I just switched, and so uh, I don't 
you know, fruit's about the only place I get the sugar from anymore, unless once in a while we break down and have something sweet. She will make um, pancakes out of almond flour, that kind of thing. And we eat raw uh, maple syrup. So, you know, I'm making good choices, but she made a point that I'm holding on to the weight for some reason. My body doesn't feel like it is safe yet. And I got to thinking about how envious I am of guys who can work out, even the trans guys who are younger, who show their their workout program. And, and this is just geared towards people who like muscles, okay? Not everybody likes muscles or cares about muscles, and that's fine. But my main thing is I know my body. I know what my body can do. I don't... Uh, I don't know how to engage it so I'm going to start from the bottom again I'm going to read the John Gabriel book and I'm going to follow protocol with him like I did in the beginning something has got to shift with me it's not the food the foods already shifted I'm not a negative I don't have the negativity or the drama around me uh, the only thing that really bothers me and pisses me off and causes me a little bit of bad stress is politics and where our country is right now and how in God's name do people think they're okay vote for whoever they voted and anyway so I I had to um, unsubscribe in a lot of things that were producing uh, talk that I don't agree with uh, anytime a person devalues morals respect justice it's not right period equality uh, so yeah I had to come to a point recently where I just started praying and letting it go and saying God the bigger hand is on this country than what we see right now and keep us all you know in in your hand comfort us during this time so I uh, I've been dealing a lot with that in the body image uh, I had to go back up to extra large in my shirts uh, because of my gut I had just gotten rid of all my extra large because I have been large for two years and boom I've gone up in a pant size I've even in in my Wranglers went up two pants. Well, no, I never went down to 38s. So I've, I've gone up in a pant size in my Wranglers and a pant size in my shorts. And uh, it's driving me crazy because I was feeling so good. Uh, but let me tell you real quick. i got 13 minutes on this. So what's going to happen with me now? Well, I told you I have mentioned in my videos that I consulted Dr. Chen about uh, – my penis uh, having to drop it's dropped in positioning and it's really bothering me it's it's not hanging right in my underwear and etc 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 so i am having surgery a week from or a week from yesterday so april 2nd next tuesday i am having surgery and the plan is uh, he feels that one of the anchors has come loose because uh, you can just twist my <laughs> and it just goes around so there's no stability there and so I told him you know maybe it's because I don't wear my pants like a lot of guys real loose and hanging down where there's a lot of crotch space um, I'm just not that type of guy I, I do wear loose fit and relaxed fit pants but I don't have them where they're falling off of me unless it's for weight purposes, <laughs> unless I'm losing weight and don't want to get a smaller size yet. But so anyway, he's going he's gonna to look at that and, and he's going to consider what the anchors look like. And if he thinks that this is going to happen again or there's a possibility where he can't raise me, um, I told him not to to go ahead and put the the um, the pump one in. I don't want the pump one, and I didn't want the pump one in the beginning. Just ignore the phone. Um, but
But that's where it stands. So if he doesn't feel that he can um, do what he needs to do and it's going to stay, he's going to change it out. So that's where I'm, I'm kind of saying, okay, now you, you're going to have surgery. So you're not going to be able to do a lot of stuff. And that's going to be a time where I am going to put my mind and body and soul in rehab and, uh, and discover and understand my gender identity and yes, how I wish I was younger and could change the body, but also understand I'm older, I'm disabled, and I still can change the body. It's going to take willpower. But it's, it's not all about, the, you know, I have a recliner body. I, I cannot do a lot of stuff because of my feet. People think I'm just totally fit because they don't see the injury. But um, there's a lot of things I can't do. And if I do push it, people don't see where I don't sleep, where I suffer, where I have to take pain pills that keep you drugged up. And my whole goal through this whole injury was not to take a lot of pain pills because I don't like them. Uh, I take the lowest kind Tremadol. It's not a narcotic. And uh, even that gives me a headache. But um, that's what I, I go to if, if I really need something to help me over the edge. So I'd like to say to the older guys here that I know a lot of guys deal with autoimmune diseases and chronic issues. And we're older and we decide to transition because now we understand what it's all about. And what we are all about. So even though I have gone through the ups and downs on these videos, you've seen me raw. Uh, I still am optimistic that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. But it, it all depends on us as individuals to seek that light and to move towards that light. And no matter how long it takes... If you keep looking at that light and you keep walking towards it, you're going to come to it in full bloom. So uh, that's what I'm doing. I will do a video after my surgery, let you know what exactly was done and what the doctor thought after he got in there. And uh, we'll go from there. But I wanted to do a quick video, uh, let you know what's going on with me. And uh, that I'm still alive and I'm still functioning, not always to the best, but I keep putting one foot in front of the other and taking it one day at a time. So always make your journey as simple as possible. We'll talk to you later. Bye.